The question is, has our appreciation for the arts contributed to our growth and success over the years? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. We would not be where we are as a company without the appreciation for the arts and how that's driven into the creative process and our focus on design, leadership, and innovation. That's been core to our success and the reason for our success over the years. Appreciation for the arts and, and arts have been in our history since our inception uh, from the very beginning. When John Michael Kohler founded this company in 1873, he bought a small iron foundry on the shores of Lake Michigan. And 10 years after he started the company, he invented a new product. He was a creative guy and he took a horse trough hog scalder, enameled it, furnished it with four feet and created our first bathtub. And he was also a, a great supporter of the arts in the community. At one time, he actually owned and managed the Sheboygan Opera House. So that really started our appreciation for the arts, as well as our spirit of entrepreneurship and invention. And if you look throughout our history, every leader after that, that support of the arts has continued on. And it's really become inherent in how we do business and how we focus on design leadership as well. Walter Kohler Sr., who was president of the company in the early 1900s, found and embraced a quote by John Ruskin, an English philosopher. And John Ruskin said, life without labor is guilt, labor without art is brutality. And that's something that means so much to us as a company because really we try to embrace the arts and appreciation for design in a business sense in everything we do. One of our most important guiding principles is to live on the leading edge of design and technology in product and process. And we breathe that through everything. We never copy and we always strive to bring things that are new and unique to the market. And that appreciation for design is very close to this appreciation for the arts. We think that the support of the arts is an important responsibility of our company, not only for our associates, but also the communities that we operate in around the world, because art is important for the world. It creates inspiration. It fosters new ideas, new ways to look at the world. So we try to support it around the world, wherever we are. Uh, here in Kohler, Wisconsin, our headquarters, we've supported and created the John Michael Kohler Art Center in 1967 in Sheboygan which has become a wonderful venue for self-taught artists. We created the Distinguished Guest Series here in Kohler, which is a performing arts uh, program, which brings in some of the best uh, performing groups from around the world into this community. But then we also support uh, art exhibits um, and Arts and Industry, a program here in Kohler where we bring artists into our factories to create and then take that art and sell it and show it around the world. So we try to uh, promote the arts in, in any way we can. The Arts and Industry program started in 1974 and the real idea was just to support the arts and, and bring the arts into the business. And so we allowed artists, and it's now been over 400 through the years, to come into our factories in the, in the pottery in the cast iron foundry in the enamel area, use our resources and create art. Art that they would then take and sell and exhibit. And we now actually exhibit throughout Kohler Village, if you see this art is throughout the village. But that idea created a business idea. And that idea was created by my father, Herb Kohler, and that was Artist Editions to create a line of product that started out being decorated products, sinks, lavatories, toilets that had these beautiful decorations on them inspired by artists and, and designs from around the world. So that started as a product line. Now it's grown into textured product, glass products, metal products, very unique artistic products that are now sold around the world and it, they've really become an important part of our brand identity around the world. So if you go through our showrooms in China or all through Europe, you'll see some of these very unique artist edition products, many of which are still created here, that are marketed around the world.
not only of the arts informed our product strategy and design leadership strategy, it's also informed our communication strategy and our creative branding strategy. In 1967, a very creative advertising executive in Kohler and a marketing executive got together and they came up with this idea of the bold look of Kohler. And really what happened after has been uh, remarkable because we took that idea and brought it to life in very bold, very creative, very artistic advertising that had real stopping power. So when consumers would open up that magazine and see an advertisement from Kohler, they stopped and they were wowed and they took note of the brand. And that very creative advertising strategy done consistently through the years uh, has really made a difference in making Kohler have leading brand awareness in the categories that we compete. It's an interesting question, what comes first, customer demand or design? We're inspired every day by our mission, and our mission as a company is to enhance the level of gracious living for all those people touched by our products and services. So really for us, it's the idea where can we improve the level of gracious living for the people who use our products? And that idea, that inspiration comes first, and then that moves into the design of a product. So really, we understand demand trends around the world, but we always want to bring things that are new and unique to the marketplace. So we really look for the idea, that inspiration of what we can do different, and then we create a product around that. And not only are form and function both critical to great design, great design today is form and function in harmony with nature. And that idea of stewardship for nature and designing things that do no harm but in fact enhance nature is critical to our design philosophy today. We spend a lot of time on our creative process and you can tell what's most important in companies by how they spend their time. We at Kohler love the creative process more than anything else we do and we spend a lot of time on it. My father Herbert is chairman and chief executive and myself and all of our teams around the world. We spend at least a day or more a month together looking at every new product and technology that's in development that we're bringing to market to make sure it really is as unique as it can be to create an amazing consumer experience. So we spend a lot of time on it and we have design studios around the world not only here in Wisconsin but also in Paris, in Shanghai, in Milan, in the UK and we have great teams of creative, peop creative people and technical people that work together to really bring these ideas to life. First and foremost, when we hire at Color Company, we want to hire people that are passionate about what they do, people that are creative, people that are committed, and people that are going to just viscerally own this company and try to make it the best in the world in what we do. So that appreciation for creativity and that desire to be passionate about what you do is really at the core of what we want in all associates everywhere in the company because this, this desire to continue to innovate, continue to improve, and to continue to be entrepreneurial as a company is critical to a company, even a company as old as we are, over 137 years old. Engineers and creatives or industrial designers and, and marketing people and manufacturing people, they're rarely ever going to speak the same language because they all bring this diversity of thought and talent to the table. And that's good. Diversity makes the creative process better and you want that. You never want them saying the same things, but you do want them collaborating and working closely together to solve a problem in the most unique way possible. And by putting these people together in a creative process that gives them freedom to think you know, very differently, to come up with a very unique solution, and that way we found that it works. But you have to bring diverse people together, give them a clear problem to solve, and then let them go with, some, you know, with few boundaries. 
I hope that everybody in our company is creative. Maybe not the accountants, but virtually everyone else. I think, you know, that speaks to a cultural difference. You know, we, we want, you know, certainly we have people that are employed to be on the forefront of creativity in communications and in industrial design, some in engineering. But in general, we want a creative spirit, an entrepreneurial spirit as a company. And we want people to pioneer new ways of thinking and new processes in most every area of our company. So that creative dynamic and seeing what's happening around the world, bringing those ideas into our company, that's a dynamic we want everywhere in our business. But we also want to continue to increase the numbers of the people that are purely focused on the creative endeavors. There's never enough creativity. I mean, we're always seeking to, to have the strongest creative resources. And largely, we focus on building our own design and creative teams around the world. We also use outside designers on certain of our brands, like Baker uh, Furniture, for example. We use outside designers. Callista, a plumbing brand, we use some outside designers, some of the best designers in the world to come in and work with us. But generally, we want to continue to build that creative resource where our business has locations around the world. 67,000 people in the creative field in the M7 sounds small to me. Uh, I think to be in business today, you absolutely have to have a dimension of creativity in any business to continue to grow and change and innovate and succeed. So that seems like a small number. It's about, you know, Milwaukee and, and this area of Wisconsin creating our own identity, creating our own creative identity that's different. It's got a different vibe, different resources, and uh, different attractions. And uh, I'd certainly rather live in this area than Chicago, but it, it isn't about, you know, just comparing to Chicago. It's about being different. And uh, I think there are a lot of very unique resources in this area. I think you can build this region as a creative hub. When you actually step back and look at the region and look in Wisconsin in general, there's a lot of great things happening here and there are a lot of tremendous resources. Companies, you know, SC Johnson, Johnson Controls, Trek Bike, Kohler Company, there's numerous great companies in the region that are all doing creative things. You have the, the school resources, the educational resources in Milwaukee and Madison and throughout the state that foster that. And you have companies that are inspired and in creating these true creative enterprises in, in advertising and product development and research. So it is possible and I think it is happening. And I, the core of the U.S. and our birth and our competitiveness over the years has been about innovation. And innovation is more and more required for the U.S. to succeed going forward. So I would say not only is the creative hub a possibility, it's a necessity for the competitiveness of Wisconsin and the competitiveness of all businesses here going forward. I think if you look at Kohler Company's influence on the plumbing industry uh, in particular, it's been profound. Uh, in, the, in the 30s and 40s and 50s, this, this industry was largely a commodity industry. And Kohler's focus on leading design and then creative brand communications and inspiring consumers has taken this industry and turned it from a commodity industry into a fashion industry, a design-driven industry. And that has driven a lot of copying, but it has really, really improved the overall uh, quality of the industry and the level of innovation in the industry because everybody's had to step up their game in terms of design, in terms of technical functionality and the unique technologies that can support that in terms of how they communicate. So I think our leadership in the industry has definitely uh, brought the rest of the industry along. We believe in the arts, we believe in creativity, we believe in design leadership because of who we are. It's authentically who we are, it's how we started, it's what we believe in, and it's also core to our business philosophy. Um, I don't think you can, you know, just, you know, create this. Uh, you have to believe in it and you have to spend time at it. If you do do it, I think it can be the absolute core of business success. So we've seen a significant return as a company in our business success over the years, our level of differentiation from the competition. 
the strength of our brand and its awareness and what it means to consumers as a company who leads in design, believes in the arts and supports the arts, that has been priceless and it has paid big dividends over the years.